Brilliant. If I could now ask Lisa to ask her question, that'd be great. Lindsay, please could you explain more about how good gut health can support mental well-being and what else can we do um, in terms of nutrition to support our brain health? What starting points may there be for our families to help with this? Okay, thank you. Um, thanks, Lisa. So the gut-brain connection is a very strong connection. It is, um, you would have heard of gut feelings those gut feelings are real there is there is there's a physical connection and there's a chemical connection between our gut and our brain so the, the physical connection is called the vagus nerve and that's it's like a communication highway that goes from our brain and it goes through to all our internal organs and it is that vagus nerve that triggers all of the messages um, to start the digestive process and it's a two-way system so if we've if we've got um issues going on with our gut, if we, if we have dysbiosis, which means an imbalance of, of bacteria in our gut, or we've got inflammation in our gut, that is going to go up the vagus nerve into our brain. If we are stressed or uh, depressed or anxious, again, that is going to go from our brain down into our gut. So as I say, it's a, it's a two-way communication highway. And what, what happens when we are under stress, our brain sends messengers via the vagus nerve to, as I, as I talked about earlier, that rest and digest mode, our, our vagus nerve more or less kind of, and this, this is not scientific, but it switches off the, the, uh, the rest and digest mode via the vagus nerve. So it will, it, it will instruct our, our, our digestive system to stop releasing the stomach acid and all of those digestive enzymes that we need to di digest our food because we are in fight or flight mode. We're under stress. Um, when we are in fight or flight mode, our body doesn't want to use up any extra energy on um, digesting food or on making sex hormones, for example, which I'm gonna get to later. So everything basically stops except for the fight or flight reaction. So that would be increased heart rate, uh, increased blood pressure, and also increased glucose so that we can fight or flee. Um, so that is how, when we are anxious or under stress, that will affect how, what happens in our gut. Um, we've also got in the lining of our gut, we've got several neurons and nerve cells that produce hormones. And these hormones, so these are the ones that, that are our gut feelings. These are the, the hormones that send us messengers um, about what's going on, on in our gut. And it is, again, it's another, it's another way of communicating. And then in our microbiome, which I talked about earlier, the one that we're trying to feed with all, you know, all of those bacteria that we're trying to feed with the uh, fruit and veg that we're eating, um, those microbes, those bacteria produce neurotransmitters and neurotransmitters are our chemical messengers of feeling, basically. Um, those microbes can produce uh, neuroactive compounds, things like GABA, which is our calming neurotransmitter, uh, or they can modulate serotonin. Um, most people know about serotonin. That is our happy neurotransmitter. Most of our, most of our serotonin is actually produced in our gut. Uh, it also, our gut also modulates his, histamine. So histamine not only is a, um, something that we, we don't only have a histamine reaction to pollen and, and, uh, foods, whatever. Histamine is also a neurotransmitter. And we have, there are specific bacteria that produce histamine as well. So, and histamine can make us, when we've got excess histamine, that can make, leave us feeling very anxious. So the microbiome, the bacteria in our microbiome produce these um, neuroactive compounds that can modulate and affect our mood and our, and our brain health. And then finally, there's also the gut lining, which I talked about earlier. I, I mentioned all of those things that can damage the gut lining. And I think I'm just going to share the screen quickly because I've got something here that I've, I meant to show in the last one. I'm just going to quickly share it. Oh, no, I can't. It doesn't matter. Um, about all the things that can damage the gut lining. And what happens when our gut lining is damaged? Um, it, it's, it's called, it, when, our, when our gut lining becomes more permeable, it means that 
particles of food and also toxins that are in our gut can actually cross the, the, the lining of our gut and go into the bloodstream and then cross the, the blood brain barrier and cause inflammation in our brain. And there's a very strong connection between depression and inflammation. And that is one of the pathways of inflammation is from our gut. Is It's when these particles leave our gut and they aren't actually supposed to be going into our bloodstream and then crossing the blood brain ba barrier, which is where they cause that inflammation. So looking after our gut is absolutely key if we want to look after our mental and our cognitive health. So you also um, asked, so that's the, the gut brain connection. You also asked about what other nutrients can support our mental health. And there are a few key things. There. And again, the, the first one actually hinges on having good gut health again, because our neurotransmitters, which as I mentioned before, are those chemical messengers of thoughts and feelings. Um, they are made up of amino acids and amino acids are made up of the small, of, 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 we get them from protein, the protein that we eat. And if our gut health isn't good and we're not breaking down the protein sufficiently well, uh, we're not going to be, we're not going to have enough amino acids to make the neurotransmitters that we need to support our mood. So the first thing is to make sure that you are eating sufficient protein and good sources of protein can be animal protein, so chicken and meat and fish, um, but also the, the plant sources of protein, chickpeas and beans, um, uh, lentils, tofu, soy products as well. So those can all contribute to, uh, to making these amino to to making these neurotransmitters that we need for these chemical messengers of thought and feelings. We also need so we have these amino acids that are the starting point, the building blocks of our neurotransmitters. But then we need cofactors to make the actual neurotransmitters, and the cofactors are the vitamins and minerals that we get from the food that we eat. And these are things like B vitamins. Uh, vitamin B6 is really important for our nervous system health. And so is uh, B12, which we only get from animal products, which is why it's, it's really important that if you are vegan or vegetarian, you do consider supplementing with B12, because it really is important for our nervous system health and that we can only get it from animal, animal protein. Uh, so we need the B vitamins for our mental health. We also need magnesium and that we can get from plants, food, mainly from plant food sources. So lots of seeds and nuts and loads of vegetables as well. Very rich in magnesium. We also need zinc. Uh, zinc we get from mainly from seafood, but fruit and veg, uh, sorry, not fruit, some vegetables and also seeds and nuts contain high levels of zinc as well. Um, and we also need something that's called choline. And when we are, when we've gone through the menopause, we actually need more choline because estrogen is, is involved in the production of choline when we are before we are menopausal. Um, and choline we can get from animal products and from cruciferous vegetables. So you can see it's really important that we eat sufficient plant foods and also protein to make sure that we are getting, first of all, the building blocks, the amino acids from the protein, but also to make sure that we're getting these cofactors because then otherwise those neurotransmitters cannot be synthesized. We need those B vitamins, the zinc and the magnesium and the choline for the synthesis. And then finally, we also need fat. Fat, our brain is 60% made up of fat um, and most of that we have to eat. And the most important fat involved in brain health is the omega-3 fatty acids called DHA and EPA, which come from, um, those come from fish, oily fish. We can get certain omega-3 fatty acids from um, plant sources like um, walnuts and hemp seeds and flax seeds, but those have to go through a conversion process and the, the human body isn't really very efficient at converting those to the form that we need for brain health. And we need those uh, fish oils, those omega-3s for our brain cells to communicate. So if you are unable to 
eat oily fish or you, you don't want to take oily um, omega-3 supplements, you can actually get vegan omega-3 supplements as well. And they are really critical for brain health. Other things to do to support your mental health uh, in terms of nu nutrition, it's pretty much the same as a gut. You need to really remove what damages our, our mental health and that stimulants, if you are prone to anxiety, um, stimulants need to preferably be left out of the picture and stimulants include caffeine. So caffeine that you would find in coffee and tea, but also chocolate, um, also in energy drinks. They just don't do us any favors at all, neither for our gut nor for, nor for our neurotransmitters because they, they make us uh, release adrenaline and we really don't need more adrenaline if we are already prone to anxiety. Alcohol has a very damaging effect on our neurotransmitter health um, as well as sugar. So sugar and alcohol both affect our dopamine, which is our reward neurotransmitter. And what it does is it attaches to our dopamine receptors and eventually our dopamine becomes down, down regulated, our, our dopamine receptors become down regulated. And we want more and more of what that substance, whether it's sugar or alcohol or any other addictive substance to get that feeling again, that good feeling. And it has a similar effect, both sugar and alcohol and other addictive substances has a similar effect on our serotonin levels, which is our happy, hormone or neurotransmitter. So it's just best to leave those out of the equation if you struggle with low mood or low motivation. Another thing that's really important is vitamin D. Um, and we've got lovely weather at the moment and I would just encourage everyone to go outside and increase vitamin D levels because it, vitamin D is another one of those cofactors that we need for the synthesis of neurotransmitters. And then one more point, um, that I'd like to make for our mental health, we need to balance our blood sugar levels. And that I'm going to be covering in our next little session because balancing blood sugar levels is absolutely key to our hormone health, which I think is the final topic. <laughs>